When you first moved to Los Angeles and started working, whether it was a little side job or in the industry, did you work any jobs for free? Were you willing to take unpaid work? So, yes, uh, I did lots of pro bono work and just to get experience or, um, you know, that kind of stuff. Again, you have to do it to a degree because, of course, you still have to make sure you're doing something to earn, you know, some kind of income to, to pay rent and get some food and all of that. Um, but yeah, there was plenty of times, and I did it for years, it, not every time, but I, something would come up like, hey, this is a unpaid gig, but we, we could use some help or, you know, anytime I had the opportunity, once I got a little bit of stability with work, I would still do those. Um, I don't do it as much anymore just because I don't have the time. Um, but if those windows of time do open up, I, you know, never have an issue with volunteering some time uh, to help somebody out. Um, but yeah, in the beginning, there was a bunch of credit building stuff that I was willing to do. Um, because again, I would view it as, a like, a like I said, an education. I knew I was going to learn something, and I knew I was going to meet some new people. And those two things are incredibly valuable, especially in this business. Um, you hear all the time, it's who you know. That's 100% true. That is what this business is. It is who you know. It's the relationships you build. It's not necessarily that, oh, somebody's giving favoritism or whatever. I'm sure those things happen too, but it is about if you came and volunteered on somebody's shoot and you did a great job uh, helping them with whatever it was, when they have a paid job, they're going to call you too. You know what I mean? And uh, that's that's how it works. Um, and uh, and those friendships and, those, and even just business relationships uh, have almost always led to a paying job in some way, shape, or form. Um, and uh, I tell people all the time when they're asking about getting into this business, like, what's the what's the best thing I could do? I said, create something. Just create. It doesn't even matter what it is. Put some energy into it. Put some creative energy and create something because you're going to call some friends and see if they're available. They're going to ask some people, whatever. However that's going to work, and you're going to create something. Now you can show people something you've created. And at the same time, you've now strengthened some relationships or maybe met some new people. And that network starts building up of who you know. And, and they now know what you do. And, you know, it kind of goes from there. Um, I've had people who I hadn't worked with in six years call me up for a job. Because whatever impression I made way back then... It somehow came around and I came up or they saw me on social media posting something and here's my new, you know, short film on YouTube and they go, oh, I remember him. I worked with him on that, you know, and so it's all about that. It's all about relationship building. So um, doing the free jobs, to me, it, it's always um, beneficial if you have the means to do it. Obviously, don't put yourself out on the street because you're taking 20 free jobs and you have no way to pay your bills, but... Within reason, um, I say do it because you're going to gain experience and you're also going to gain uh, uh, relationships. Of those times that you worked for free, for credit, for something on your reel, whatever, how much of that actually led to paid work down the line? I think that, that uh, quite a few of them did. And again, I think it has to do with how much energy you're willing to put into something. I never approached a free job as like, ah, it's a free job, I'm going to have you know, half-ass this job. I always approached it as I'm going to do the best I can do, work as hard as I can to help the project be successful. Um, and I think because of that mindset and attitude, I made enough of an impression on people that that they wanted to hire me for when they got the paying gig or whatever. You know what I mean? So I think, again, I think almost every one of those jobs I met and, and created a friendship or... or working relationship with at least a few people on each one of those sets that then led to me getting called for something else. Even if it was low paying, you know, like, hey, can you help out with this? You know, I enjoyed working with you on that. Can you, uh, you know, I, I'm really trying to think of any of that, that led kind of, that never got a phone call that way. But um, I just I can't really think of one that didn't. I think they all kind of led in some way. Sometimes it wasn't right away, like I said, um, uh, but they eventually, um, almost all of them led to something positive in that way. Uh, and again, it's I think just chalking it up to to hard work, not being afraid of hard work. You know, 
Um, luckily, I think, again, my family, my parents ingrained that <laughs> into me enough uh, <laughs> that uh, I've never been afraid to put that work in and, and be the last person on set. And, you know, uh, even as a director, when I can get away with it, I'll help put stuff away. Certain job, you know, union issues, you can't do that. But um, if I am in that situation where I can, I do. And I'll go, why is the director carrying C-stands? Like, because <laughs> we're all in this together. You know what I mean? Um, I, obviously, it doesn't get to work out that way every time. But when it does, I was overseas doing a, a project, and they didn't have the same uh, rules. So I was there loading trucks with all of them, you know, um, and trying not to get in the way, because sometimes you can get in their way. You know, <laughs> like, and now I'm making us go slower because I don't know what I'm doing. But... Uh, you know, when it when it's appropriate, then I try and help out whenever I can. And I love your website in that you you not only have great photos of you on set and things like that, but you you say here's who I've worked with, here's what I do, and you really like break it down. And I was very impressed with how you did it. And you did it, you do it in a fun way where it's not <laughs> it's not like you're you, it's over the top. You know, I, I I was very impressed with that. I don't Thank think you. I've seen that before. Thank you. Uh, yeah, a lot of that credit needs to go to actually my cousin uh, oh, Jeremy yeah. Dunn who helped me build that website. Oh, very cool. Um, and he's really great with that stuff. And, and, uh, and I felt so just humbled that the, the actors that I've worked with, they gave such great quotes. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I deserve this, but they, they really were helpful in that way. And, and uh, I really, really appreciated um, them putting the time into even putting some of those responses. And, um, but yeah, it was always the goal to kind of just make it presentable and like, here's, here's what I do. And, and, uh, um, uh, you know, obviously the goal is to make myself hireable, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and, uh, um, and, uh, kind of showcase some of the things that I, you know, hopefully help me stand apart, uh, maybe from the pack, um, with, with my experiences from, from the action side of things to the visual effects side of things. Um, uh, and I think that's also a, an important thing to think about for any aspiring filmmakers is, is uh, you know, figuring out what you can do that helps you uh, stand apart or um, makes you at least uh, unique in some certain way because uh, those little things can help, you know, can help you uh, maybe edge, edge out the competition for... Uh, I've certainly had it where um, not only the action side of things have helped get me jobs, but also the visual effects side. And the combination of both sometimes has, has helped me. Um, because, you know, I'll get, hey, you know, we want you to direct this because we know you're also really good at action. I've gotten that call a bunch of times where instead of just hiring a director who maybe doesn't have that experience, it's the combination of those experiences that have helped get me the job or like with visual effects. Um, I got a pretty big TV series based on my experience with visual effects and obviously directing. They liked my directing, good, that checked that box. But now it's a, it's a VFX heavy show. Oh my gosh, he's also a VFX consultant? Like wow, okay, that checks another box. He can work directly with the visual effects artists and make sure that they're shooting it correctly. And so that helps just edge me out. So having those skills um, in, for those things are, are what helps me in a lot of situations um, to maybe get hired for a job. <clears throat> but it could be many, you know, a variety of, of tool sets that you have. Um, but it's, it's, I think, important to, uh, you know, lean into those things and try and present those things and let, make sure people know that you can do those things. Like, you know, if you're... Uh, uh, you know, somebody who's amazing with horses or whatever, that could actually be a big skill. I could help you direct a movie about rodeos or, you know what I mean? Like, so all those things are, are kind of important to help you stand out for, for what you do. You know what I mean? And without, of course, naming names, what was one of the worst grunt jobs you ever had and how did you get through it? Because I, I get the sense that you try to take a positive spin with <laughs> yes, everything, yes. even if it's not positive, yeah, and, and yeah. I admire that. The, um, maybe just one that was so unbearable, but somehow you got through it and I don't know if you took something with you in terms of learning something or you yeah, always, always, Yeah, always, always learning. I think... I mean, I guess the grip work is, it's a lot of physical work, so that was tough, but uh, it wasn't like, I didn't feel bad, you know, 
during the experience, so that's tough to say that. I, I had a great time. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> but that's um, good. There's been a, there was a job where I was a second AD, and just the conditions were so tough. I think that was the like below freezing temperatures oh, wow. and then blazing hot in the day. We're out in the middle of the Mojave Desert. So, and <clears throat> I was asked to be the first AD on it, but I kind of got... I don't know how to say it exactly, but I, I just got a bad feeling about the project, so I tried actually not to do it. But I had uh, some some other friends who really wanted the job, like want, needed the work, and by me turning it down, then I wouldn't be able to get all of them on to the project. So I said, look, I'm not going to be the first AD because uh, I just I smell a disaster coming, basically. and. I said, look, I will help you. I said, why don't you, to one of my friends, I said, how about you be the first AD? I'll be your second. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll help you with whatever you need help with um, uh, if you want to do it. I said, but I'm warning you right now that we probably shouldn't do this. And uh, it just had to do with the people involved and, and lack of experience and the extreme conditions we were going to be in. So I knew that it was going to be difficult in a way that shouldn't be difficult you know and that's like in the way of like making sure people are taken care of and all that and sure enough we <laughs> trying to survive the the desert in, in that time that we were in the below freezing temperatures and um not having adequate uh things like warming tents and stuff like that to keep cast number one warm and we did end up some people ended up getting hypothermia and yeah it was bad it was bad um but uh we made it through it <laughs> so um but yeah there was uh that was a very very interesting experience and of course i learned a ton from that experience i learned uh chief among them that you know what to accept and not accept um because we said yes to certain things that we should not have said yes to because it, it ended up being um uh, dangerous, you know, like physically dangerous for some, for, for certain things. So, um, but, but again, I don't regret the experience because again, uh, what I learned from it really, really helped me literally on, I think it was two projects later. I'm like, nope, li here's the life experience I now have from this. This is why I won't do this. And this is why I think you guys shouldn't do this. And they actually listened to me. They go, okay, all right, fair enough, blah, 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 you know. So it was actually became a tool for myself on, on another project of having that experience and going, look, we had two actresses that got hypothermia. Do you want it? Oh, no, we don't. Okay, well, then this is what I think you should do. Here's the steps I think that we didn't take on this project that I think should have been taken. And um, so by doing that, I had that experience to draw from. I mean, if the actresses were fine. They, they recovered and everything, but... Um, but uh, yeah, it was that was a difficult one to get through. Probably the most, uh, probably the most. And I guess as a second AD, I don't know if that's really considered a grunt job, but um, that was the most difficult one, I think.